Hello everyone, this is Robert, and this is my outdoor kind of weather station thing that I'm using for wind speed data for my indoor wind chimes. Um, I have a video down below if you want to know more about that project, but I wanted to do a little bit more in-depth on this thing because I think this aspect of it can be used for a lot of different applications like powering um, outdoor solar lights, you could use it for outdoor cameras, things like that. It's kind of a nice little simple package for doing stuff like that in addition to wind speed sensors. So be sure to check out the um, chapter listing for this video so you can skip around and find the um, chapters that are important to you. Uh, but let's get started talking about this outdoor wind speed solar powered thing. So what exactly is this thing and why should you care? Well, I can mostly answer the first part of that. Second part, that's all on you. Um, this is a way for me to get wind speed data from my yard into my house so that it can power my um, indoor wind chimes. And like I said, you can check the link down below for more information on that project because it might seem kind of weird. So we basically have this weather station, we have a solar panel, and then we have all the guts inside this box. Now, why did I go this route? Well, the thing about wind speed is that I really want it very localized. I could have used something like Weather Underground, I could use some online service, but that's not really going to be what the weather is right in my yard. That's going to be, you know, some other weather station somewhere else. So second question, why didn't I just buy a simple weather station off of Amazon or something like that? There's a lot of kind of IoT weather stations out there. Well, that's a good question, but I wanted uh, really good reliability. And I'm not saying that those things aren't reliable, but maybe I don't want to rely on my Wi-Fi being up. Maybe I don't even want to rely on power being available because let's say during a big windstorm, yeah, maybe that's when I want the thing to work and we do have a fair amount of power outages here. So I wanted something that was very self-contained, very reliable and um, kind of acts on its own. You know, this thing is a closed source, it's its own thing. The other problem with some of those weather stations that you see on you know, Amazon and elsewhere is they're kind of proprietary. They just have an outdoor thing and then they have the indoor thing and you can't really easily hack into that and get the actual wind speed out of it. So. That is why I came up with this. And I've talked about this a little bit in my other video, but it needed it to be self-contained. So it has a solar power to charge the battery inside of here and then its own weather station. So this thing that you're seeing is everything that is needed to send the information inside. So let's um, do a little bit of a look inside and I'll go over the um, solar panel and the charger setup because I think that is really useful for a lot of people because you don't have to hook this up to a weather station. You could use this for cameras or a little outdoor fountain, landscape lighting, all sorts of things like that. So let's uh, take a look inside this box. So let's talk about the actual charging setup and the power supply in this. So in here we have a massive 12 volt um, sealed lead acid battery. I got this size mostly because it fit inside this enclosure nicely and I wanted this to go multiple, multiple days without having to charge. This is way, way overkill, but at the same time, I could expand this system to have additional outputs to support some cameras, things like that. Where I'm gonna be placing this in the yard, it kind of looks out into open space and there's some prairie dogs and um, actually some coyotes and stuff. So I maybe wanna point a camera there and this would be able to support that as well. So. Here's the system. We've got this um, nice little weather sealed um, enclosure and I have links to all this stuff below. Of course, that's how you keep the lights on, right? So we've got this um, yeah, relatively decent little enclosure. We've got a sealed lead acid battery. This is a little 3D printed sled that it sits on. And then we have the solar panel. This is a 10 watt solar panel. And this is also weather sealed as well. And then we have a charger up here. So the way this works is a solar panel goes in um, right here and it goes directly into the input on the charger and then the charger goes into the battery and then there's an output. You actually have a 5 volt uh, USB output. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. A little 5 volt USB and then you also have a 12 volt output on this that goes directly into 
this barrel jack that plugs into the Arduino in the middle. So that's kind of um, all there is to it. These little charge controllers have gotten really inexpensive and they're really commonly available on you know Amazon, eBay, wherever. And I think this was only like 30 bucks, something like that. And you can set it to different battery types. They're really nice. Um, solar stuff has gotten a lot better. So for a uh, power system like this, all you need is a solar panel running into a charge controller, running to, into a battery, and then you're all set. So um, let's talk a little bit about the electronics. We've got a SparkFun breadboard, which is basically just a um, clone knockoff of a um, Arduino Uno. And then on top of that, we have the SparkFun weather shield. I went this route because well, I know this product quite well from working at SparkFun, and it plugs directly into the weather station, which is off camera right now, and all of the code is pretty much done for me. So this was really, really, really simple to do. And then you can see over here, I've got one of these NRF 24L01 transceivers. I have a separate video about that. And then that sends all the wireless data out. So this is a nice, really self-contained, very simple system. So the last thing I wanted to talk about are cable glands. Um, people don't always end up using these and they're really helpful. Um, you can get these in a large assortment, but they're really useful for making these watertight connectors, you know, something like that. They're double-ended and they have a little sleeve on the inside. Now, what happens when you have something strange like this to where the sleeve is round and this obviously isn't a round cable? Well, you can 3D print out of TPU your own little sleeve. And that's exactly what I have right here. Um, you can see that I just kind of modeled the cable and then made a little, I don't know, coupler spacer thing out of TPU. And I just kind of made slits in the side to where I could slide in the cable. That goes in there. And then when I clamp this down, it squishes that TPU and makes a nice tight connection between there. So cable glands are fantastic. Um, I have an assortment of them somewhere. Uh, but you can get these in a nice little assortment on Amazon and they come in handy for projects like this all the time. So yeah, that's about all there is to it. Um, I didn't really go into any details on this weather station because it's really just a SparkFun product that you can buy. And um, there's a whole tutorial on how you connect it in with the weather shield. I'll link to that down below, but it's pretty simple. You basically just plug this in and then load the library and you're instantly reading the stuff from here. So nice and simple. Uh, so yeah, that's all I got for this video. Check out all the links down below for all of this lovely stuff. And I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.